This is The Natural Laboratory, a podcast exploring science for Bay Area National Parks. I'm Daniel Strain. I'm huddled in a Golden Gate National Recreation Area parking lot, listening to fire ecologist Allison Forrestal. She's giving the rundown on an unusual controlled burn to about two dozen firefighters. Forrestal wears a flame-retardant yellow shirt and baggy green pants. She's being literal when she says that they'll be working with fire in a box. The Park Service is exploring whether burning can spur the growth of lupin plants, a critical food source for the endangered Mission Blue butterfly. The experiment requires many small blazes. That means these firefighters will spend their day hauling steel boxes the size of small swimming pools up coastal bluffs. We are headed up to the last plot area of the burn box burn out here at the Marin Headlands. I'm chugging along a steep cliff overlooking San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge with Jennifer Chapman. She's a fire communication and education specialist with the Park Service. We've had a long stretch of foggy days and we we actually saw the sun today at 9.30 in the morning, so it's a great day to burn. Clumps of coyote bush crackle and pop into flame inside one of the metal boxes. In a few minutes, the flames die out, leaving behind an even square of charred ground. With taller plants like coyote bush gone, the silver leaf lupin should be able to compete for space in these squares, Chapman says. Typically, a fire is a major event in a landscape that will reset the clock to take a plant community back to sort of its early stages. In recent decades, ecologists have begun to grasp that, like lupin, many plants need a little destruction in order to thrive. The cones of the bishop pine tree, for instance, are sealed tight and only open after a blaze. For Park Service ecologists like Allison Forrestal, fire isn't just a destructive force. These fires are amazing. It's this force that's much bigger than people. It has a huge impact on our ecosystems. And flames, both in a box and out, are an old tool for molding ecosystems, Forrestal says. The fire regime here in the Bay Area is really complex, just in the sense that the role of humans has been really significant. Prior to European settlement, most of the fires here in the Bay Area were ignited by Native Americans. Western settlers stifled this blaze-friendly lifestyle. But local plants had long since grown accustomed to, and sometimes dependent on, frequent fire. Even as scientists try to restore the lupin's fiery past, its future becomes more uncertain. Greenhouse gas emissions are soaring worldwide, and temperatures along with them. The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change warns that hotter, drier weather could lead to fiercer and more frequent wildfires. Northern California's unique climate, however, makes predicting what's in store for local plants and animals less cut and dry, Forrestal says. Some predictions say we'll have more fog as the climate warms, and other predictions say we'll have less fog. If our summers get even foggier, we'll probably see less wildfires because that's our fire season. If our summers become less foggy, the opposite will happen and we'll likely see more fire. But the Bay Area's coastal bluffs and pine forests have evolved to expect certain levels of fire. A shift either way could then throw these communities further off balance. If we had less fire, eventually we'd lose our bishop pine communities because they need fire to reproduce. But if we got actually a lot more wildfire, we would lose our bishop pine because the trees take a few years at least to get to the age where they can produce viable seeds. Projects like this Mission Blue Butterfly Burn show a growing appreciation for fire's role in the wild world. But as climate change looms, Forstel says ecologists will need to dig deeper into fire. 
That entails understanding the unique role that flames play in communities from pine forests to coastal scrub. The next step of understanding is thinking about how complicated fire is and how fire in the Bay Area is really different than fire in the Sierra Nevada, which is really different than fire in we'll Yellowstone. We we'll want to make sure that it doesn't get past this blue line here. Soon young plants, either more coyote bush or a jumble of squat species like lupin, will fill in around the crispy remains of old growth. Either way, park scientists will get a glimpse of how fire defined the Golden Gate generations ago and how flames might shape this hillside in the years to come. For the Pacific Coast Science and Learning Center, I'm Daniel Strange.